Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes. Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes is based on the on the life of a real little girl who lived in Japan from 1943 to 1955. She was in Hiroshima when the United States Air Force dropped an atom bomb on that city in an attempt to end World War II. Ten years later, she died as a result of radiation from the bomb. Her courage made Sadako a heroine to children in Japan. This is the story of Sadako. Chapter 1. Good Luck Signs Sadako was born to be a runner. Her mother always said that Sadako had learned to run before she could walk. One morning in August 1954, Sadako ran outside into the street as soon as she was dressed. The morning sun of Japan touched brown highlights in her dark hair. There was not a speck of cloud in the blue sky. It was a good sign. Sadako always was always on the lookout for good signs. Back in the house, her sister and two brothers were still sleeping on their bed quilts. She poked her big, big brother, Mashiro. Get up, lazy bones, she said. It's peace day. Mashiro groaned and yawned, and he wanted to sleep as long as possible. But, like most 14-year-old boys, he also loved to eat. When he sn sniffed the good smell of bean soup, Mashiro got up. Soon, Mitsu and Iji were awake, too. Sadako helped Iji get dressed. He was six, but sometimes he lost a sock or a shirt. Afterwards, Sadako folded the bed quilts. Her sister, Mitsu, who was nine, helped put them away in the closet. Rushing like a whirlwind into the kitchen, Sadako cried, Oh, mother, I can hardly wait to the go to the carnival. Can we please hurry with breakfast? Her mother was busily slicing pickled radishes to serve with the rice soup. She looked sternly at Sadako. You are 11 years old and should know better, she scolded. You must not call it a carnival. Every year on August 6th, we remember those who died when the atom bomb was dropped on our city. It is a memorial day. Mr. Sasaki came in from the back porch. That's right, he said, Sadako-chan. You must show respect. Your own grandmother was killed that awful day. But I do respect Oba-chan, Sadako said. I pray for her spirit every morning. It's just that I'm so happy today. As a matter of fact, it's time for our prayers now, her father said. The Sasaki family gathered around the little altar shelf. Obachan's picture was there in a gold frame. Sadako looked at the ceiling and wondered if her grandmother's spirit was floating somewhere above the altar. Sadako-chan, Mr. Sasaki said sharply. Sadako quickly bowed her head. She fidgeted and wiggled her bare toes while Mr. Sasaki spoke. He prayed that the spirits of their ancestors were happy and peaceful. He gave thanks for his barber shop. He gave thanks for his fine children, and he prayed that his family would be protected from the atom bomb disease called leukemia. Many still died from the disease, even though the atom bomb had been dropped on Hiroshima, Hiroshima nine years before. It had filled the air with radiation, a kind of poison that stayed inside people for a long time. At breakfast, Sadako noisily gulped down her soup and rice. Mashiro began to talk about girls who ate like hungry dragons, but Sadako didn't hear his teasing. Her thoughts were dancing around Peace Day of last year. She loved the crowds of people, the music, the fireworks. Sadako could still taste the spun cotton candy. She finished breakfast before anyone else, and when she jumped up, Sadako almost knocked the table over. She was tall for her age, and her long legs always seemed to get in the way. Come on, Mitsuchan, she said. Let's wash the dishes so that we can go soon. When the kitchen was clean and tidy, Sadako tied red bows on her braids and stood impatiently by the door. Sadako-chan, her mother said softly, we aren't leaving until 7.30. You can sit quietly it is, until it is time to go. Sadako plopped down with a thud on the, the tatami mat. Tatami mat. Nothing, nothing ever made her parents hurry. While she sat there, a fuzzy spider paced across the room. A spider was a good luck sign. Now Sadako was sure the day would be wonderful. She cupped the insect in her hand and carefully set it free outside. That silly, Mashiro said. Spiders don't really bring good luck. Just wait and see, Sadako said gaily. Chapter 2, Peace Day. When the family started out, the air was already warm and dust hung over the busy streets. Sadako ran ahead of the house of her best friend, Shizuro. The two had been friends since kindergarten. Sadako was sure that they would always be as close as two pine needles on the same twig. Shizuko waved and walked toward her. Sadako sighed. Sometimes she wished her friend would move a bit faster. Don't be such a turtle, she shouted. Let's hurry so we don't miss anything. 
Sadako-chan, go slowly in this heat, her mother called after her, but it was too late. The girls were already racing up the street. Mrs. Sasaki frowned. Sadako is always in such a hurry to be the first that she never stops to listen, she said. Mr. Sasaki laughed and said, Well, did you ever see her walk when she could run, hop, or jump? There was pride in his voice because Sadako was such a fast, strong runner. At the entrance to the Peace Park, people filed through the memorial building in silence. On the walls were photographs of the dead and dying in a ruined city. The atom bomb, the thunderbolt, had turned Hiroshima into a desert. Sadako didn't want to look at the frightening pictures. She held tight to Shizero's hand and walked quickly through the building. I remember the thunderbolt, Sadako whispered to her friend. There was a flash of a million suns. Then the heat prickled my eyes like needles. How can you possibly remember anything, Shizero exclaimed. You were only a baby then. Well, I do, Sadako said stubbornly. After speeches by Buddhist priests and the mayor, hundreds of white doves were freed from their cages. They circled and twisted. They, they circled the twisted, scarred atomic dome. Sadako thought the doves looked like spirits of the dead flying into the freedom of the sky. And when the ceremonies were over, Sadako led the others straight to the old lady who sold cotton candy. It tasted even better than last year. The day had passed too quickly, as it always did. The best part, Sadako thought, was looking at the things to buy and smelling the good food. There were stalls selling everything from bean cakes to chirping crickets. And the worst part was seeing the people with ugly wet whitish scars. The atom bomb had burned them so badly that they no longer looked human. If any of the bomb's victims came near, Sadako turned away quickly. Excitement grew as the sun went down. When the last dazzling display of fireworks faded from the sky, the crowd carried paper lanterns to the outer banks of the Ota River. Mr. Sasaki carefully lit candles inside of six lanterns, one for each member of the family. The lanterns carried names of relatives who had died because of the thunderbolt. Sadako had written Obachan's name on the side of the, her lantern, and when the candles were burning brightly, the lanterns were launched on the Ota River. They floated out to sea like a swarm of fireflies against the dark water. That night, Sadako lay awake for a long time, remember everything about the day. Mashiro was wrong, she thought. The spider had brought good luck. Tomorrow, she would remind him of that. Chapter 3, Sadako's Secret It was in the beginning of autumn when Sadako rushed home with the good news. She kicked off her shoes and threw the, opened the door with a bang. I'm home, she called. Her mother was fixing supper in the kitchen. The most wonderful thing has happened, Sadako said breathlessly. Guess what? Many wonderful things happened to you, Sadako-chan. I can't even guess. The big race on field day, Sadako said. I've been chosen from the bamboo class to be on the relay team. She danced around the room gaily, swinging her school bag. Just think, if we win, I'll be sure to get on the team in junior high school next year. That was what Sadako wanted more than anything else. At supper, Mr. Sasaki made a long speech about family honor and pride. Even Mashiro was impressed. Sadako was too excited to eat. She just sat there, grinning happily. From then on, Sadako thought only one thing, the relay race. She practiced every day at school and often ran all the way home. When Mashiro timed her with Mr. Sasaki's big watch, Sadako's speed surprised everyone. Maybe she dreamed, I will be the best runner in the whole school. At last, the big day arrived. A crowd of parents, relatives, friend, and friends gathered at the school to watch the sports events. Sadako was so nervous, she was afraid her legs wouldn't work at all. Members of the other team suddenly looked taller and stronger than her teammates. When Sadako told her mother how she felt, Mrs. Sadaki said, Sadako-chan, it's natural to be a little bit afraid, but don't worry. When you get out there, you will run as fast as you can. Then it was time for the relay race. Just do your best, Mrs. Mr. Sasaki said, giving Sadako's hand a squeeze. We'll be proud of you. The kind words from her parents made the knot in Sadako's stomach loosen. They love me no matter what, she thought. At the signal to start, Sadako forgot everything but the race. When it was her turn, she ran with all the strength she had. Sadako's heart was still thumping painfully against her ribs when the race was over. It was then that she first felt strange and dizzy. She scarcely heard someone cry, Your team won! The bamboo class surrounded Sadako, cheering and shouting, and she shook her head a few times, and the dizziness went away. All winter, Sadako tried to improve her running speed. 
To qualify for the racing team in junior high, she would have to practice every day. Sometimes after a long run, the dizziness returned. Sadako decided not to tell her family about it. She tried to convince herself that it meant nothing, that the dizziness would go away. But it didn't. It got worse. Frightened, Sadako carried the secret inside of her. She didn't even tell Shizuro, her best friend. On New Year's Eve, Sadako hoped she might hoped she could magically wish away the dizzy spells. How perfect everything would be if she didn't have the secret. At midnight, she was in her cozy bed quilts when the temple bells began to chime. They were ringing out all the evils of the old year so that the new one would have a fine beginning. With each ring, Sadako drowsily made her special wish. The next morning, the Sasaki family joined the crowds of people as they visited their shrines. Mr. Sasaki looked Mrs. Shisaki looked beautiful in her best flowered silk kimono. As soon as we can afford it, I will buy a kimono for you, she promised Sadako. A girl your age should have one. Sadako thanked her mother politely, but she didn't care about a kimono. She only cared about racing with the team in junior high. Amidst throng of, throngs of happy people, Sadako forgot her secret for a while. She let the bright joy of the season wash her worries away. And at the end of the day, she raised Mashiro home and won easily. Above the door were the good luck symbols Mrs. Sasaki had put there to protect them during the new year. With a beginning like this, how could anything bad happen?